So I made mention in another podcast about dragons, and uh, a couple of you in the comments here were intrigued, and we started talking a little bit more about it, this idea of, of player personality. We spend all this time building, painting, collecting, playing games, board games, miniature games, role-playing games. Your personality comes out. If, if we look at my board gaming collection, most of them read like 80% are RPG light fantasy type board games because I, I love that idea of a dungeon crawler. Go in, level up, get some loot, fight a boss monster. That's my personality kind of reflected in my collection on there. So with board games, with role playing games, with miniature games, I love fighting dragons. I can't really say why. I think early on when I started playing advanced Dungeons and Dragons as a dungeon master, um, looking through the various dragons in the monster manual and just thinking, wow, it'd be really cool to fight against these or, or play against these. And then um, a number of years later, reading the Dragonlance modules and the books and making my way through Dragonlance um, with my friend D, who's an amazing DM, He's, he still is. I played a wizard. I passed the, well, magic user at the time. It's ad and I did pass the tower, the test of high sorcery on there. I took the red robes and like that was a big deal. In ad and Kryn, when you took that test of high sorcery and if you were like a sixth or seventh level magic user, that was a massive, massive deal on it. You know, now in D&D, like that's baby cakes. That's, that's nothing on there. So it's always um, playing Kryn and fighting Draconians and, and the idea of Tachesis and Paladine and all this stuff. Yeah, obviously it, it kind of influenced me tremendously. So I try to look out for games where I can fight dragons on, on board games and things like that. We got discussing back and forth. Ranking the dragons of the games that I have from easiest or most common to middle to legendary and, and sharing with you my experiences of those dragons. And I want to know what games are out there, board games out there that I should be looking at to fight more dragons because much like miniature war games, uh, you can never really have enough dragons or enough board games or enough stuff um, to play on there. So let's look at uh, Descent, 2nd Edition. It's got some dragon figures in there. Later on, and no spoilers throughout any of these on there, because I don't want to spoil that, but I'll offer kind of my experiences from it. Uh, Descent, 2nd Edition, as you move to the mid-tier of the campaign or some of the adventures, you start to encounter dragons. And my experience of dragons in Terranoth is not that they're common, but they're not really that uncommon. It's it's kind of like a high fantasy, and, and you fight dragons, and they're not, uh, you know, they're certainly not easy. They're not zombies and goblins, but they're not truly terrifying. They're kind of a mid-tier. They, they have this feeling of, they have this feeling of just kind of a giant lizard that's maybe going to breathe some fire on me. So somewhat of a challenge. I'm not quaking in fear for Descent 2nd Edition when I face a dragon. Descent 1st Edition had a little bit more of a bite to them. But again, they were, they were kind of common. I, I feel like when I fight them, I'm fighting an MMO. Where it's like, as I level up, and now I'm at this level, like we just upgrade the monsters, and now I'm beating on dragons and ogres. Just because that's kind of the, the challenge rating I'm at. And when I go a little bit higher, it'll be something else somewhere that I'm fighting dragons on it. So not as satisfying with that. Now we move into Dungeon Saga. Um, I backed this on the Kickstarter. It's by Mantic Games. I was intrigued because it was billed as the spiritual successor to Hero Quest. It's got some interesting mechanics. It has some good points. It has some bad points. Um, but one of the expansions is the Tyrant of Halpy, where you're fighting this dragon. So right away I'm like, wait, we've got a dungeon crawling game. We're going up against Undead. We've got the expansion for the Orcs. We've got the expansions for the Infernals. And I have a chance to take on a dragon. And it's this big, big miniature dragon. Dude, it's pretty pretty well done on it. I painted it up as kind of the, the classic the classic green dragon to look at. So that sold me on the Kickstarter right there, the ability to do that. It's an encounter. 
the Tyrant of Halpy is a powerful dragon that's up there. It's, it's one of the more powerful dragons that I've fought, both in ability and attack ability. But it gets knocked down a bunch of pegs because of really poor level design in that here's this really powerful dragon, everything you'd expect the dragon to be, but you're in a dungeon. And the tiles for Dungeon Saga, for that expansion that Mantic put out, they're not very vast. So you fight the dragon in a very, very enclosed space, which from the perspective of the adventurers going against it, and from the perspective of the, of the overlord controlling or well, playing the tyrant of Halpy, it's, there's really only one tactic. We're just going to go in and kind of beat on each other because there's no maneuverability. There's no chance to split the party up. Or, or you go this way, I go that way, or have the dragon chase you, or, or utilize different strategies for the dragon. It's like, just run forward and have a dice fest. I mean, it's tough. It's challenging, but ultimately, hmm, you know, poor level design really kind of killed it on there. But it's, it's, it still has some bite. Then we move into the Dungeons & Dragons adventure systems. And I, w- I was really intrigued by this because... Uh, they get a lot of criticism because it's essentially just like flip a tile, fight a monster, face an environmental effect, move on to the next, move on to the next, and eventually you resolve the game. It's very simplistic in how it works. And in a way, I say, well, that's really good because it's a quick, simple, fast-playing, dungeon-crawling game. And I think where a lot of that criticism comes from on a side note is it's the Dungeons & Dragons universe. So if you play D&D itself, you're familiar with the character classes, you are familiar with the monsters, you're familiar with the background narrative, you just go in expecting like a role-playing game, where it's like, no, it's, it's a board game. And even if you have not played D&D, the role-playing game, you kind of have an idea about it if you're into gaming. So I think the very thing that makes it so attractive as another way to explore another way to explore the D&D universe makes it a little bit hard because you go in expecting D&D. Uh, the Temple of Elemental Evil compared to Wrath of a Shardalon. So Wrath of a Shardalon, uh, a Shardalon is this giant red dragon and the miniature is fantastic. And you go through its dungeon to eventually having a showdown. A Shardalon is powerful. And I've had a lot of memorable fights against him. I hope to have many memorable fights in the future against him. But with each edition of the, the D&D Adventure System games, you know, you started out with... I'm going to try and get the order correct here. You started out with Ravenloft. Then we had a Shardalon. Then we had Legend. Then we've got Temple of Elemental Evil. Then we've got Tomb of Annihilation. And I think this summer is something with Waterdeep dungeons of something in there it's the same core set but with each kind of release they've tweaked the rules they've changed little things they've made it a lot more polished not that there was anything wrong with ravenloft i mean there's a dragon in there draco lich which was fun but the rules have been getting better and better as it goes temple of elemental evil um you fight a legendary black dragon in there And because the rules are a little more polished and because some of the supporting miniatures match a lot better to the narrative, that dragon fight has been more memorable. That dragon fight has been better. I feel like some of the miniatures and support in Wrath of a Shardalon, because again, it was the second release, was just kind of random. It's like, okay, here's the background narrative story. We've got a dragon, like, just toss in a bunch of other miniatures and, and have a go. There's no, it makes no sense, some of those miniatures that you fight. Temple of Elemental Evil, the campaign system, is amazing in it. All the miniatures make sense. The story makes sense. When the other miniatures work with the dragon, because you fight everything at once, it, the story is much better. The narrative is much better. And with the rules being polished, the dragon behaves much better in there. I prefer fighting that dragon um, compared to a Shardalon. But some pretty good, some really pretty good experiences in there. So let's switch over to card games for a moment, because as much as I love fighting dragons with miniatures, uh, we have the virtual card games, and then we will go with my number one vote, my number one dragon fight that I love, I continue to love, and that I would recommend. So Pathfinder, the adventure card game, Rise of the Rune Lords. 
I love it for a variety of reasons. It works. We will leave that for a discussion at another time. I know there's a second release version coming out of it really, really soon. There are dragons in Pathfinder the Adventure card game. Some of them early on are pretty easy. Some of them later on are very, very challenging with it. I think Pathfinder does a great job with it in the card game in that you are ready at the, the appropriate level to deal with a dragon. Like a, a lot of dragons that you face in board or card games, they're rightly so the boss monster, the end monster. You know, you've, you've worked through, you've cleaved through a lot to get there. You're finally there, uh, rightfully so, and you know this is going to be an epic challenge. But you're never going to encounter that early on. Pathfinder throws uh, younger, early dragons against you to fight. And then much later on, much more experienced dragons. So it's it's interesting to see both those sides and both those perspectives of it. I, I enjoy facing the dragons in that game and challenging them with the different characters and different combos and different things that you can do. For a card game, it feels like you're fighting dragons. It's got a very good narrative, uh, a very good uh, evocative script with it. It works. So let's jump over to Lord of the Rings heresy with what i'm about to say my entry into the lord of the rings card game was okay i saw the movies does that count for anything um i i, I kind of like the movies on there although you know frodo and the hobbits just like totally annoyed the hell out of me and a couple of things I, I didn't really understand in it but you know hey they're the movies didn't know much about lord of the rings beyond that but i heard amazing things about the card game and everything about it in terms of the mechanics and how it plays and the challenge levels, yes, it's, e it's easily up there. Mechanics, narrative, replayability, collectability, everything, top five games ever. It, it is everything that you might read about it. So I jumped into Lord of the Rings just on that perspective, and it intrigued me. And in a roundabout way, because I wanted to know more about the locations in the card game, and how things play and the characters that led me into that community that led me into the books that led me, you know, to a whole nother world and way to experience things. So it was kind of a, a roundabout way. Every dragon in Lord of the Rings, um, on the kind of Gen Con release solo packs, the one-off play adventures, they're the hardest dragons I've ever faced. There's some of the hard, well, except for our number one and two, we're going to talk about in a second, they're no joke. There's no D&D &D dragon. This is no, like, Baby Cakes dragon on there. Really powerful, really stu tough to go up against. And you are doing massive customization in Lord of the Rings. You've got your character, and you've got your decks of abilities and attributes. It's a deck-building game, too. So you build some hard, hard decks, meaning, you know, you've got the great combos. You're chaining everything. You're not breaking the rules, but you're bending the rules. You are building the best, most optimized thing. And you throw it against some of these dragons and these adventures, and they just crush you. And you're like, oh, wow, wow, wow. I, I really feel like, and, and still even when I know the adventure path and having played through it, I mean, there's a lot of discovery and places to see and things to do. That's all there. And even in some of these adventure paths, having played through them, when I fight those dragons, I, I feel it. I like pause for a second, and I'm like, this feels like a dragon fight. This is going to be this is going to be intense. This is going to be really really a lot of fun on there. For the card games, it's a buy-in with Lord of the Rings because you get some amazing dragon fights, but that's like two percent of the game. That's like two or three adventure paths. There's this massive, massive all these other things to play and do in there with the narrative, but they are very, very memorable. So now the runner-up and the number one. And I say the runner-up versus the number one in my experiences because it's a question of acquisition. It's a question of approachability. Dark Souls, the board game, a very, very polarizing game for a variety of reasons, and that's up there on the forum and the narratives and just Board Game Geek and up on my blog and my podcast. I love Dark Souls. I will say I was not involved in the Kickstarter, which is usually a bad thing, but in this case it's a good thing. The game is very polarizing because you either love it or hate it on there. It's got some grinding aspects. It's very hard in terms of the monsters you fight. It's very unforgiving. You could pump in, um, essentially, and the Dark Souls 
the Dark Souls games discussing tactics and, and things like that, those are up on my channel here on YouTube under the board game selection. But essentially you go through and fight minions, then you do a mini boss and a main boss. You pull random gear that you spend souls and currency for, and you pump in two or three hours of play. And then you fight these mini and main bosses where they're potent. They've got an AI deck. They're powerful. They trash you. You just died game over. You know, a lot of board games you feel like you're never going to lose. Or you play D&D, Healing Surge, Healing, Resurrection, True Res. Just there's no consequences. I've already won. It's just a question of how long. Um, Dark Souls, the board game, if you're not getting good, you're going to get trashed on there. And some dudes are going to nerd rage because they pumped in three hours of their life. And what do you mean the boss just crushed them? Well, you got to learn the AI. you got to figure out what's going on. You really have to approach it um, very tactical. So for me, in the leveling up and the random magic items, that and the miniatures, it, it works on there. The mega bosses, um, one of the mega bosses that has recently been released is the Black Dragon mega boss, this huge dragon. Wow. I mean, this is the number one fight. Um, for me well the number two the number one is in the second but again there's a qualifier on there wow i mean feels like a dragon feels like a crazy mega boss um at this point you've grinded through the minions you've grinded through the mini boss you've grinded through the main boss like you are at an extreme power level in terms of what you can do with equipment and gear and leveling and dice but you walk in there and you feel fear you walk in there and you're like okay look before we flip over the first card Um, because it's powered by an AI deck with how it acts and reacts. Before we flip that first card, we got to talk tactics. we got to pause for a second if you're with the group and figure out just what exactly we're doing here, because this is going to be crazy. I mean, really, really memorable, um, amazing, amazing fights. But it's that chaotic neutral. you got to be ready to dice it all down and and gamble real-time two or three hours of your gaming life for something that you might very well lose on there. You need to know that going in. The number one dragon. The number one. Kingdom Death Monster. And this uh, this is kind of... I, I put a qualifier on this because certainly you can buy into Dark Souls. Certainly you can buy into to other dragon-esque type games. Um, Kingdom Death Monster. It's in print. It's out of print. You track it down. Unless you play something like Warhammer 40,000, the price point is huge on it although compared to 40k you're like that's nothing to buy in it's got miniatures it's an experience where you're hunting these monsters it's essentially the best massive of a miniature game the best that makes up a miniature game because it's got ton of miniatures the best that makes up a role-playing game the best that makes up a board game put it into this literally this black box of death kingdom death monster and you have this settlement you have adventures you go out you find out about this world no spoilers And you hunt these monsters. You fight these monsters. And they are really powerful. They are really terrifying. The AI, it's an AI deck of cards that's active and reactive to what you do. It, out of all the games that I've played, it is the spookiest because you feel like the AI deck does such a good job of controlling the monster and reacting to your tactics and and what you do to it, where it feels like someone's playing it. It's like one of those chess boards that moves the pieces itself. It, it it really feels like is someone on the other side of the world invisibly controlling this monster? I mean, it's 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 spooky as heck playing it. So, wow, any of the boss monster fights are pretty crazy. But there is a dragon, and he is the pinnacle of all the dragons. The king of dragons. Forget about that that game of whatever mother of all dragons. This is the craziest hardest dragon fight that i've ever had first of all you got to get good and you got to level up and you got to get your settlement and get your heroes up to there and grind your gear so you've already invested a ton of time Um, but along the way for the story arc for the dragon no spoilers you need to make some choices on how to approach it adversary friend a living god something to be feared, something to be worshipped, and that's going to open up different aspects of the AI. That's going to open up different encounter points on there. So by the time you face this dragon, 
it's not just a boss fight. It's not just a miniature, say like in Dark Souls. It's something that's living. It's something that you've interacted with, with the whole game. I guess it's like meeting an idol or a living God on the table. And then in terms of its abilities and its powers, it is the most fearsome thing I've ever faced. It is the most fearsome thing I continue to face in there. And even maybe even having seen only half of what it can do, because every playthrough is different with um, how it interacts, it is really, really spooky. It is more potent than uh, a long time ago. I took on Tachesis, and that was pretty memorable. Nothing compared to this on there. So that gets my number one vote. But it's a qualifier because you got to be able to buy in or find someone to play Kingdom Death Monster. But in terms of normal approachability, the number one hardest would be the Black Dragon from Dark Souls as of right now. Biggest letdown dragon, sorry, Descent, second edition. So I'm going to turn this over to you. What dragon fighting games does Fritz need to check out? I've got my gear. I've got my armor. I'm ready to grind. I'm ready to level up. I'm ready to get the usual players, um, including my buddy Joey, who if you need to sacrifice to buy you a couple of other turns, he'll happily do it. Like, what should we be looking at? What should I be looking at? in terms of games where I'm going to take on a dragon.